Hi, everyone, and welcome to this series about compilers and programming languages. Today, I'm going to talk about grammars and uh, context-free grammars in particular, and how to make them unambiguous. So we'll talk about precedence and associativity. So let's look at a context-free grammar here. And this is a grammar for addition and multiplication. And we can also have numbers and we can put things into parentheses. And this is a context-free grammar here, as you can see, uh, where we have a so-called non-terminal to the left. In this case, it's an expression. And to the right of each production, as it's called, this is a production, you have other kinds of symbols. Either they are non-terminals, so they are, you see here, they appear both on the right-hand side and the left-hand side. These are called non-terminals and they are, can be recursively defined, like in this case. And then you have terminals, which are just symbols like plus or multiplication or a number that comes directly from the, from the lexer. Let's uh, look, look at an example. So if we are going to parse plus five, plus seven, plus 10 multiplied by three, you can interpret this in different ways. So here we see that we evaluate, if we will evaluate this expression, uh, first, 5 plus 7, then take this, the result of this, and add 10, and then multiply everything by 3. So this interpretation here assumes what is called uh, that the uh, we have left associative operators. Both plus and multiplication are then left associative, and that they have the same precedence. So what is precedence? Well, precedence basically tells you how to bind. How, how tightly each of the operators are binding. So if it's got higher precedence, it's binding, binding tighter. And, and you can also, of course, use a parenthesis to, to resolve this if your grammar is actually including parenthesis, which is, in this case, it is. If two operators have the same precedence, we need to also to disambiguate this. And, and then there is something called associativity. And the most common ones are left and right associativity. So in this case, in this expression, we saw that we had a left associativity. So we are binding to the left. In this example, we instead we have right associativity. So it will evaluate first the expressions to the, to the right and then go into the left. And the final one here is actually a mixture of this. We all also have left associativity. We can see this that this plus five plus seven is, is first evaluated or it's binding, binding tightest. But we can also see that 10 multiplied by three is done first. And this means that this grammar need to have higher precedence that multiplication had higher precedence. And this is really what we want. I mean, if, if we are writing a normal expression with a multiplication and, and, and uh, uh, addition uh, as we will do in, 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 you know, in high school math. So let's, let's look at this grammar again. I mean, you can write this grammar in different ways. This is, is kind of a BNF grammar that you see here. Typically, sometimes see, when you write BNF, you have write colon colon equals here instead of the arrow. But I mean, it's, it's the same. You can also view this as just looking at different productions here. So, so this, these, this way of writing the grammar and this thing is the same thing. Well, we'll use this syntax a little bit more now in the next slide, just because it's it maybe a little bit simpler when we are doing so-called derivations. So let's look at that. We have then uh, the grammar again with uh, with these productions. We can uh, then replace when we're creating so-called derivations. Then you replace the non-terminal here with this expression, and you can do this over and over again. And, and this is called a derivation of of an expression. If you have an ambiguous grammar. You, there is unclarity of, for example, precedence and associativity. And this means that you can derive different trees. You can derive different trees so you can interpret the actual same expression in different ways. So we'll take an example here, here again and a little bit shorter ones. So two plus three multiplied by five. And now we want to derive uh, using this grammar. So first you start with, a, with the first uh, non-terminal. So in this case, we have just one non-terminal, so it will be expression. And then you can select one of the productions here and say, 
replace this expression with the thing on the right. So let's say that we take this one and we want to derive, so we get this expression. So we can want to derive for this specific expression here. So we have expression plus expression, and then you can take one of these expressions and replace that with something to the right here. So, so if we take num here, we replace with num, a number then represents a number. So in this case, this num here would be the two here. And then we can replace uh, uh, to the right here, this expression with the whole expression again, but with this multiplication so that it matches this expression here. You see num here plus num plus expression multiplier expression. So it looks very close to what we want to do. And if we then replace this expression, so this expression with num in both these places, we get a derivation that matches this expression. So num plus parentheses num multiplied with num. And here I write also parentheses here to show the order if you would actually draw the, the tree. Uh, and just to note that this is not the same as, thing as these parentheses here, because these parentheses is if you would actually write out parentheses in your expression. But we can do this in a different way also. Uh, since we know that this grammar is actually ambiguous, we, we can derive it in a different way. So let's, let's look at um, such a uh, derivation. So we, have the, we start with an expression again, and then let's say that we take the multiplication here. So we, we are now going to derive it from the right here. We have an expression multiplied by an expression. We replace this expression here, this one with a num. So it would be represent this number five here. Then we take the left expression and use this production here. We take, replace this expression with to what's on the right. So we get this one. And then we do the same thing plus and it go from expression to number, expression to number. So what we can see here is that we have derived two different trees, basically, from, from the same expression. So the grammar is ambiguous because we can derive two different trees from the same expression. So you see here, we got this one, which would be the, the one that we would expect that you are actually first uh, multiplying three to five before you do the addition. So this would be the incorrect one. I mean, this is our interpretation of, of, of how we would like to parse this expression. I mean, it depends on what you're parsing. So let's say that we want to do that. So we want to create an unambiguous grammar that encodes that plus and multiplication, they are left associative. So we want to encode that. So we always derive it using left associativity and that multiplication has higher precedence than plus. Well, we can actually do this by just rewriting this grammar into another context-free grammar that is unambiguous. So the first step here is, is to, to actually create new terms. So we see here that we replace this expression to expression with a new one, but here we have the recursion only here, not on the right-hand side. So this is something that is actually removing the, uh, the ambiguity that we see here. And note also that we have this, we still have the recursion on the left-hand side. We could have done it on the right-hand side, but this recursion on the left-hand side means that we get left associativity of, of the plus operator. Right, so we have the plus here, and then we say that have something called term. So we will now create a new uh, non-terminal called term, that is referred to here. So either we have this, that where you have the term to the right, or the expression is directly a term. So this term is, is then including the multiplication operator. So we have here term equals term, and then we have a factor. So we do the same thing. So you can see that we are kind of creating like a ladder downwards. And it turns out that if the deeper you are, you get higher precedence. So this is the way that we make plus and multiplication where multiplication has higher precedence than plus. And then we have the factor and the factor just includes the number. And then we also include this where you can explicitly state parentheses. So this means that you can always disambiguate using parentheses because we have included real parentheses in, in, in a way that you can parse this expression. 
Okay, let's look at one example again and, and look, look at the same example and when we are doing the derivation. So we start with an expression, right? We, we, this, is, so this is the start non-terminal here. So you have to express which, which ter non-terminal is the start non-terminal. And then you go from here, you say that, okay, I replace this expression. I mean, the choices that I had was just this one or this one. And, and if we were selected term, we could have gone to a multiplication to, to term and multiplication, but we will start here with a with a plus here. And uh, we'll see the reason is that there is only one way to actually parse this, uh, use this grammar. When you're using this grammar, there's only one way, one derivation. So we have here expression plus term, okay. Uh, then you can replace this expression, this one with a term. So we just change this to a term. And since this term is also a factor, we can go to the factor and the factor is also a number. So you see here, now we got all the way down to so have this number represents this number. And then we have plus. So you see here, the expression is a term, the term is a factor, a factor is a number. Then let's go on with the right one. This term now, we can replace that with a factor or a term but we need to take the first one because we have a multiplication here. So then we do like this. We have a term multiplication with a factor. This term is also a factor and we can go for a number and a number. And here we see that we have this expression. So we parse this as we wanted, which was the same thing as this one. So what we do not want now is the possibility that we can parse like this. Let's see try to de derive it in, in a different way then. And if we cannot derive the whole expression, it will stop. So then it's not a complete derivation. So we, the, the point is that the grammar should, if it's unambiguous, it should only be possible to derive an expression, uh, have one derivation for one expression. Let's start again with expression. And then we have a term. So that we now, instead of taking the first one here, plus, we just said, okay, let's say that it's a term instead. We go that route. Then uh, we can say that we, we, we want to have the, we, we're trying to derive it on the right-hand side. So we're doing it with a term and multiplication here. So we get the term, multiplication and factor. And then we have a, here that we can take this factor to go to a number, right? And then we want to take the next step here where we have this term, and then we want to derive from this term the addition, but we can't, right? Because from this term, what well, the only thing we can do is to derive another multiplication, which we don't want because then we cannot derive this expression. We can take a factor, but then it's a number, but it's not a number, it's two plus three. So the only way that it can actually go this route would be if the user would have written from the beginning a parenthesis here, a parenthesis here and parenthesis here. But then we are using parenthesis to explicitly dis disambiguate this expression. And this is why we have these parentheses here at the bottom. So you can use this as a way to disambiguate. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope that you got a little bit better understanding now of, of ambiguity. Uh, uh, precedence and associativity and how to actually resolve ambiguities using uh, grammars and how to rewrite the grammars. If you like this video, please subscribe and add a comment and tell me more about what you want to learn about compilers and programming languages.